No lasso. So something, somebody left me a note here. Uh, here's a question. I'll answer it for everybody. The difference between conditioned consciousness, that pointing out instruction from Padmasambhava yesterday, conditioned consciousness and primordial consciousness, is it that conditioned consciousness is contaminated by the illusion of a false reality or false misleading phenomena? Yeah, that's true. That's true. And then this may be right, who knows, about the six-footed stove, um, the person who wrote this, unidentified, no problem. Oh, it's Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Where's Elizabeth? That Elizabeth, thank you. Um, could be. The, it's something I simply don't know at all, but it's a good, it's a good guess. The six-footed stove, uh, could it be the one like in Tenzin Palmo where the, you're sitting in your meditation box, two arms, two legs, one, one head, one body. That's a good, it's a, it's a good number of arms, better than three or one. And that goes for the legs also, much better after two than three. <laughs> and one head, it's very odd if you have two heads because you don't know where to put the seats a little. And one body, so that could be it. Could be. <laughs> it could be. Maybe so. Really, your guess is as good as mine. Maybe that's it, though. That could be maybe. That could be the jackpot. Very good. So, <laughs> time to go to meditation. Let's please find a comfortable position. Preferably seated for this one. Preferably seated. Unless you're uncomfortable. If you're uncomfortable, then any posture that sounds good to you. <coughs> so the um, next section in the text, in this concluding chapter, is on Guru Yoga. Again, he gives us a meditation. So I thought, well, why read about it when we can actually do it? But just as one, one sentence of introduction, he said the best way to counteract obstructive forces, so just kind of harmful energies, you can say, or obstructive forces, malevolent entities that might want to get in the way of your practice, avoid pitfalls. There's all kinds of ways we can go astray. And the way to enhance your practice, really kind of supercharge it. It's in the, there's a Tibetan term, bokdun. Bokdun is kind of like give it that extra, that best extra boost. Enhance is good. The way to do that, threefold, that's, that's quite quite big benefit, is to practice Guru Yoga. Guru Yoga. So let's just do it. I'll talk a little bit about it afterwards. But let's do that. <clears throat> So by way of a very brief introduction for myself, before I read excerpts from the text, the central point of the practice of Guru Yoga is to to realize experientially the indivisibility, the non-duality of your own mind with the mind of the Guru. But this is not a marriage of souls, this is not a union with somebody else's mind. What happens if you have two gurus, or twenty gurus, thirty gurus? It gets very complicated. So, not that. When speaking of the union of your own mind with the guru's mind, the guru's mind simply is rikpa, is dharmakaya. Don't think of anything else. Nothing less, there is nothing more. But this means the whole practice of guru yoga is designed to melt away any sense of deference, any separation between your conscious awareness, this ordinary consciousness of the present moment, and Dharmakaya. So with the motivation to realize the identity of your own mind with Rigpa, to see your own face as the Dharmakaya, 
thereby achieve perfect awakening for the sake of all sentient beings, settle your body, speech, and mind in their natural states. Come to that still point, which is the beginning, the middle, and the end of the path. Awareness resting in its own nature with no object. Still, cognizant, clear. And now visualize Amitabha, Lord of the family, as the sentinel of mindfulness on the crown of your head, as the great compassionate one. So I thank you for all seeing images of Amitabha in the form of a Buddha, with the 32 major and 80 minor marks, ruby red in color, glowing red. Not very large hovering immediately above the crown of your head, above the crown chakra. Lord of the family. There are the five Buddha families of Amitabha, Akshobhya, and so on. Lord of the lotus family, to which Avalokiteshvara, Padmasambhava, Tara, all belong. For which the Buddha field, of course, is Sukhavati. So visualize the Buddha Amitabha, radiant, ruby red light. His body is red in color like coral and has all the signs and symbols of enlightenment, including an Ushnisha on his head. This is the crown protrusion and one of the major marks of a Buddha. So visualize as clearly as you can. Viewing Amitabha as your guru. His hands are in the mudra of meditative equipoise, holding an alms bowl filled with ambrosia. I think you know the mudra, left hand below, right hand above, the thumbs pressed together symbolizing the union of wisdom and skillful means. And holding an alms bowl filled with ambrosia, amritta, the elixir of immortality, of the deathless state.
Imagine him upon a lotus and moon seat with his legs in the Vajra Asana, or full lotus. Imagine at his heart, in his heart chakra, the seed syllable, the seed syllable of this entire family, Hri, red in color. And imagine rays of light, of ruby red light, flowing out in all directions. Invite your primary and lineage gurus and dissolve them into him. So imagine rays of light being emanated in all directions, out from the Hri, from his heart. And inviting all the lineage gurus back to Padmasambhava, all the lineage gurus through time, back to Amitabha himself, and your own root gurus, all receiving the call, being called from afar, so to speak, and all converting in upon and dissolving into, indivisibly, Amitabha. directing your attention to the Guru Amitabha. Now of the nature of all of your Gurus synthesized into one form, one being, the very embodiment of pristine awareness, make whatever supplications you know. Or recite, I pray to the Dhammakaya Amitabha, I pray to the Sambhogakaya, the great compassionate one, that is Avalokiteshvara, and I pray to the Nimanakaya, Padmasambhava. So as you focus on the Dhammakaya aspect, the most central aspect, the sheer embodiment of your own pristine awareness, and Amitabha himself, you may, if you wish, recite the root mantra of Amitabha, very simple. Om Amitabha Sri Om Abhidhamma Sri Om And turn to the Sambhogakaya form, the great compassionate one, Avalokiteshvara. And we can recite one mala of the Om Mani Peme Hum, Om Mani Peme Hum.
once again in the spirit of supplication, we can turn to the Nimanakaya aspect, Padmasambhava, and we can recite the Vajra Guru Mantra. Om Ahum Vada Guru Pemisiri Om Ahum Vada Guru Pemisiri Om Ahum Vada Guru From the depths of your heart and not with mere lip service, completely place your trust in Him with the conviction you know whatever is to be done in this life, future lives, and the intermediate state, or the bardo. Do so with such heart rever- heartfelt reverence and devotion that your hairs stand on end and you are moved to tears. And each time you make this application, do so in the manner of calling your guru from afar. And by so doing, scattered outer thoughts will swirl away, and inner thoughts will nakedly arise as empty luminosity. Whatever experience arises due to the power of blessings from praying in that way, sustain it. It is said that as a result, there will not be a single obstructing force or pitfall. So simply let your awareness rest in its own place. And rather than effortfully visualizing Amitabha on the crown of your head, just rest in awareness. And let that appearance arise effortlessly, like a rainbow simply appearing in the sky.
ever so gently, like holding a feather. Sustain the visualization, sustain even more importantly the sense of the presence of Amitabha above the crown of your head. And whatever thoughts might arise, view them with your best approximation from the perspective of Rigpa. And view each thought, whatever comes up, as a, as a spontaneous expression, effulgence, a printed pristine awareness. Creations of the luminosity of your own awareness. And rest in stillness. With your awareness empty, open, expansive, and luminous. And evidently, as this appearance of Amitabha and the nature of Amitabha is nothing but an appearance of your own awareness, of the nature of your own awareness, and rest in the obvious truth that your own awareness is indeed indivisible from that of the Guru, Amitabha.
Thank you.